Luke chapter 18, please. We'll read from verse 1. We'll end at 7 where our text is. And then a few preambles and we go straight to the word. I hope that we'll have the time to pray whilst I teach because God placed it as a strong burden in my heart. And I'm praying that someone will find this key tonight and it will turn you into a sign and a wonder. And he spake a parable to them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. We're reading to verse 7. Our text for tonight is found in verse 7. Saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. Verse 3. It says, and there was a widow in that city. This widow came unto him, the judge now, and said, avenge me my adversary. Verse 4, and he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Verse 6, and the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. Read verse 7, let's read together. Are you ready? Verse 7, 1, 2, go. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? One more time. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him? Amen and amen. One more scripture. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 12. Let's read together. One to go. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go, and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. May that be your experience in Jesus' name. Now, let me start by saying every encounter in Koinonia is a training a training for you to become a person of grace, a person of understanding, a person of stature, and a person of power. Please pay attention now that every service, it doesn't matter in what form or in what fashion it comes, provided it is a koinonia service, I want you to see it as an opportunity for training. The kind of training that makes you a believer with grace, a believer with understanding, a man or a woman of stature, and a man or a woman of power. Hallelujah. I have read out for you a list of the kind of believer you are becoming as you submit yourself to the teachings week in, week out. Your becoming is not random. It's important that you continually burn within your mind and your spirit the kind of believer you are becoming. Are we together now? Every cook or every chef, whilst they are mixing all the ingredients, both simple and complicated, they know that they are mixing it towards a common goal. They have an end. Are we together? Yes, this is very important. I wrote something down here as an introduction and I want you to listen. Knowing God's desire and ordination for your life is like receiving an admission letter. Just listen before you write. Knowing God's desire and his ordination for your life is like receiving an admission letter into a high institution of learning. It merely tells you what you can become, but an admission letter does not make you become. Are we together? If you receive an admission letter to study in a medical college or a law college, it is barely an invitation. It's giving you legitimate access to submit yourself to the processes that make you that lawyer in experience, that doctor in experience. Are we together? As profitable as holding an admission letter is, you cannot be called a doctor just because you have an admission letter. You cannot be called a lawyer. Nobody is ever called a lawyer because you have an admission letter into a law school or a doctor because you have an admission letter. So knowing God's desire for you, understanding, knowing his ordination for your life does not automatically mean you will become that which he preordained for you. It's like holding an admission letter. You have to submit yourself 
to the various practices, the various disciplines, the transformative processes that make you become inexperienced as per the field you were admitted in. Are we together? Now, generally speaking, I, I just decided to start with a checklist tonight. Most believers do not know that your becoming mighty in the spirit is predicated upon an exact body of spiritual knowledge. It is not every spiritual information that is necessary for your making, for your growth, for your becoming. But the bodies of truth required, if not found and if not understood and engaged, you will remain weak, you will remain stunted, your Christian experience will be, I mean, a continual expression of frustration. There are a number of things every believer must know. I wrote down a few things here and I want you to listen as you write, but use it as a checklist and find out which of these truths you do not know before we get into the teaching of the word proper tonight. Are we together now? My intent is to see by God's grace that you are thoroughly furnished. In fact, the Bible says it beautifully. I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 1. Paul was communicating his frustration to the church in Corinth. Give it to us, media, 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 1. And I, brethren, I could not speak unto you as spiritual, he said, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Verse 2. He says, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. Isn't it amazing that Paul said, when I came to you, I came like a chef carrying both milk and meat. But when I discerned your state, it was a waste to feed you with meat. I had to make do with milk. It says, because you are not able to bear it then, neither are you able to bear it now. So time does not necessarily determine growth. He came one time and found out by assessing them spiritually that they were still babes. And he said, no, I have to make do with milk. That means every man of God has milk to feed and meat to feed. And you see, um, this is not a pastor's conference, but... Let me just use this to charge everyone in righteousness. You're a man of God here. Let me tell you the truth. How you get milk is different from how you get meat. Are we together now? Every mother here knows that it is very easy in most cases to get milk. You just need to express it is within you, even if it's from a cow or a human being, and you don't have to die to get milk. But every time you see meat, something died did you hear what i said a woman can be gisting while expressing milk laughing and all of that but every time you see anyone holding meat it is a testament that death has happened so when you desire to serve god's people milk and meat for milk all you need to do is to find the source it's a gift from god just the responsibility of expressing it, and that's it. But for meat, every time you see meat, whether on your plate or on your fridge, it is a testament that something died. It says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord. There is a relationship between death and sight, death and revelation. Are we together now? Anyway, so back to our discussion. Paul was saying, when I came to you, I wanted to serve you with milk or with meat and I found out you were still infants and I had to make do with milk. That means every man of God comes with milk and meat and the transition is dependent on one, your level of receptivity, but number two, how much you engage the milk. When they see the level and the extent of, of development, they are motivated to now transit you into meat. And then even among meat, there are all kinds of meat. Are we together now? Yeah. There's what the Bible calls strong meat. Strong meat. Strong meat. Hallelujah. There are a few things every believer must know. Number one, every believer must understand the art of prayer. You have to be trained to understand the art of prayer. We'll speak a bit about that tonight. Number two, every believer needs to understand how to access light from scripture. If you do not know 
and you do not submit to training to know how to access light from scripture how to access light from scripture is different from reading the bible you can read the bible you can even study the bible and not know how to derive profit from scripture are we together now it's the same thing like having coconut and knowing how to mine the oil out of the coconut someone can have a lot of coconut at the back of your house and never be able to produce coconut oil or groundnut groundnut oil or olive oil any kind of thing there is a technology just because you have the raw material there does not mean you have the intelligence are we learning now many people have scripture but they do not know how to draw forth the riches the profit from the word and this happens through training are we learning now number three every believer must be trained on how to tame the flesh every believer you must be trained on how to tame the flesh you must be taught the dynamics of living above the flesh as a way of thinking as a way of living as a way of acting your christian experience will be stunted in in many 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 dimensions if you do not know how to tame the flesh number four every believer must understand the structure of god's kingdom the way god built his kingdom i'm just doing a checklist for your spiritual growth this is koinonia the structure of the kingdom how did god build the kingdom to function it's important that you know this the bible talks about christ being the chief cornerstone then it talks about the foundation of the apostles and the prophets are we together then the bible now calls every believer living stones living stones that make up that structure so everyone is a part of that building but there is there is an architecture that you must understand and if you violate that ordinance you will pay for it for instance if you turn any apostle and any pro prophet into the cornerstone of your life you have distorted the architecture are you seeing that now no matter how great any man of god is no matter how great any individual is at the point where you turn a man of god to now become your chief cornerstone it doesn't matter what kind of impact they've made in your life you've distorted it number two if you fail to regard the foundations that god has put there are consequences also you see how it is most believers do not understand the structure of the kingdom what else do you need to learn you must be trained as a believer to know how to access help help from the realm of the spirit and help within the world of men if you don't know how to access help you will suffer your life will be mara it will be like bitter waters many believers do not know how to access help there is a way people access help and there is a way there is an approach to life that if and when you follow help will be far from you are we together what else do you need to learn as a believer all believers need to be trained in the art of warfare spiritual warfare war betides the believer whether by deception or sincere ignorance who does not understand the dynamics of spiritual warfare you may not live to survive and walk in victory especially within this end time warfare every believer needs to understand kingdom service every believer needs to understand kingdom service the bible says we have been bought with a price it says therefore glorify the lord god with your body which is the lord's kingdom service every believer needs to learn the principles that make you relevant in today's world the principles that make you relevant in today's world not only to god but to men there are many believers who have not been so trained unfortunately they have not learned the principles that make them spiritual and yet relevant within the context of their world without compromise jesus said you are in the world but you are not of the world when it has to do with your origin you are alienated from this system but in terms of your impact you are in the world in other words you cannot ignore the happenings that are around your world 
Are we together? Every believer must be taught wholesome spirituality. Wholesome spirituality. Wholesome spirituality. This captures a general knowledge of the Bible. Wholesome spirituality. A general knowledge of the Bible. While you may not know everything about the Bible, it is a shame and I tell you it, it, is, it is quite honestly embarrassing for any believer who has attended church consistently for one year, two years, three years under structured mentorship to not be able to intelligently articulate the Bible, even if it's in summary. Are we together? You must have a general fair enough knowledge of the Bible, for instance, the subdivisions of the Bible. It is, it, is not, it is not anything burdensome for an average believer to be enlightened enough to know that the Bible is fragmented into various dimensions. There is the five books of Moses, the Pentateuch. Are we together now? Yes, Genesis down to Deuteronomy. There are the poetic books. There are the prophetic books. Are we together now? Yes. And then we have the Gospels. We have the book of Acts, we have the epistles, we have revelations, at least to have that fair enough knowledge. There are major stories in the Bible. Anyone who has been reading his Bible and loved Jesus, at least you should be accustomed to. You can imagine, we're talking about, say, um, the parable of the ten virgins. And someone who has been in church for at least three to five years is wondering, you mean there's such a thing in the Bible? It means that person, you may not be demonized, but you are lazy lazy you should have found it somewhere are we together there are certain scriptures that your spirit you cannot say i forgot no are we together now it's like a doctor who has never heard of a syringe a doctor who looks at a stethoscope and says what is this i understand there may be certain machines you've not seen at least the ones that were invented recently but you cannot say the tools how were you trained then are we together now? Wholesome spirituality. You must have a general appreciation of Bible knowledge. Number two, I'm still explaining wholesome spirituality. I just felt like dwelling a bit there. The knowledge of God. The knowledge of God. Make reference to my teaching, knowing God accurately. Knowing God accurately. You may want to listen to it to help this dimension of knowledge. You want to be wholesome spiritually. You must press to know God. I teach there that the knowledge of God is three-dimensional. The knowledge of his character, the knowledge of his ways, the knowledge of his power. Hallelujah. Then you must understand the plan of salvation. You are not spiritual. I don't care what you know. If you do not understand the plan of salvation, if you cannot intelligently articulate the plan of salvation, one, you are not matured. Number two, your spiritual knowledge is standing on shaky ground because it is the entire scope of the plan of salvation that culminates to the person Jesus, who is the epicenter of the believer's work. Most Christians can tell you all kinds of things. They attempt to chew um, strong meat and you check they don't have teeth strong meat is for those who have teeth well developed not milk teeth there's what we call milk teeth am i right on that milk teeth milk teeth is not for you know strong meat the plan of salvation the average believer who is a church goer cannot explain to you the entire plan of salvation in the most simple way not 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 any elaborate theological explanation but very in a very basic way because they have not read it and unfortunately for many they have not found themselves in christian circles where that subject has even been discussed most believers can sadly talk about breakthrough they can talk about lifting they can talk about giving payment of vows and these things are not wrong but ask the average believer to give you intelligently a discourse on the plan of salvation. You'll be very disappointed. And that even includes all spiritual leaders. Hallelujah. Wholesome spirituality demands that you know who the believer in Christ is. That is the next aspect of wholesome spirituality. I hope I've not lost you. I'm just giving a very, a very necessary preamble. The believer in Christ, who is he? 
Who is she? When you say someone has now become a believer in Christ, what is the implication of that statement? In the days of men like Papa Hagin, it was a shame. It was almost embarrassing. It was, it was like a taboo for you to be around the word of faith circle and you could not describe articulately. You didn't have to be a pastor. There are things you see. When you are in certain spiritual circles, you may not know everything, but there are things that are most surely believed. Luke chapter 1 verse 1 the things that are most surely believed among the brethren there are certain bodies of knowledge that those who are genuinely connected to that spiritual stream you cannot be ignorant of no it's like being for instance a member of say living faith and you have been there for 10 years and they ask you what is faith he said me too look let me tell you I'm really just a no shower as you see me like this. I don't like trouble. What have you been learning? Are we together? Or with all due respect to a member of Mountain of Fire and they ask you, tell us something about prayer. You say, my brother, I just pray. That's it. I just pray. That's all I know. No. You must stand in defense the things that are most surely believed among us. Who is learning? Very important. You must learn about the Holy Spirit. Nobody becomes spiritual, truly, if you have not been elaborately and extensively taught about the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He is the principal sponsor of true spirituality. And so if you don't know the Holy Spirit, we have a right to doubt how you became spiritual. Are we together now? And if the Holy Spirit is not there to journey with you, your, your appetite to becoming spiritual is at risk because you are going to encounter familiar spirits. There are other testy spirits that are, that they are determined to be tour guides for you. And my goodness, they will take you to chambers in the spirit and mislead you indefinitely. And you see, the thing about conviction is that even if you are wrong, you will die believing you are wrong because it was an experience you saw. You went there. You went out of your body. Nobody can say you didn't go there. It is only when we examine what you saw from the lens of scripture that we now see that truly you traveled, but where you went to is where you shouldn't have gone to. Are we together? If I come out of my body now and I have some kind of spiritual experience, uh, you can't say it was not real. I was there. I saw it. I saw this and saw that. It is only when we compare your encounters with the authority of scripture. That's when you say, ah, truly I went to, but I'm supposed to pray that I never go there again. Because the things that I saw, the things that I submitted my thing, myself to, and the result that followed my life after I came back. Everything that comes from God has life. One of the ways you test everything spiritual is its ability to give life. Revelation, its ability to give life. Anointing, its ability to give life. One of the ways you test corruption in the spirit is the presence of death. Not the authenticity, not the eloquence, not the intelligence. Are we together now? So if you draw power from Satan, even if what you are teaching is true, people will be dying as they are listening to it. Strangely. They will listen to what should give life. But because the, the Holy Spirit is not the one behind it, what they are hearing is not a lie, but they will still die. One of the ways you test spiritual things is by the life-giving dimension in it. I am come that ye may have life. If a word comes from God, what does it give? If the anointing comes from God, what does it give? If prosperity comes from God, what does it give? You see that now? So you test your experiences by the richness of the life of God that is derived out of it. All the dreams you've been having, show me the life. How did it make you become like Christ? How did it make you conform to the image of Christ? Are we together? I kept receiving impartation every time. With all due respect, impartation doesn't matter from who. If that impartation is turning you to something else and you cannot find life, 
even if the person doing the impartation is innocent, we must trace where the oil is coming from. By oil, I don't mean olive oil. I mean, are we together? Most believers, because they have not been trained, they do not know how to test what they are receiving. They do not know how to test experiences. Every time angels appeared before men, the first thing they said was, fear not. That means the angelic should not leave you in fear and confusion. Gabriel said, I am come to give you understanding. So if you tell me you have been encountering angels and I see your life full of all kinds of confusion in every area, then I know that this angel you have been meeting is misleading you. Because when Zechariah doubted Gabriel, he felt insulted. He said, I am Gabriel that comes, that stands in the presence of the Lord. Are we learning now? I'm just doing this, 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 this checklist to be able to help you. Because many believers, unfortunately, many believers, they want to be mighty in the spirit. But they have not attained unto that state of maturity. And the desire to be mature does not produce maturity. The desire to be mature pushes you closer to the corridors of wisdom. Proverbs 18 and verse 1. Through desire, a man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom. So desire takes you to the realm of wisdom. And when you encounter wisdom, then with wisdom comes growth. Because it is through wisdom, a house, a life, a destiny is built. Are we learning now? Very, very important. Wholesome spirituality. You must know how to engage all of this. I'm saying this so that you can check yourself. Beloved people, look at me. Refuse to be stunted. Refuse to be a believer that does not bring justification to the spiritual investments that God is making on you. If you've been in Koinonia for one year, two years, or perhaps you have followed sequentially all the teachings that have come, I expect that you should have attained onto a state. You should be able to at least define a few things. One of which I'm going to be teaching on again. Are we together now? Your value for the word, your passion for spiritual things. I should see certain evidences in your life that justify your time. Now, most believers use inaccurate parameters to measure growth. Usually in our world, and especially is because it is the most charismatic, we want to use evidences of prosperity and miracles. Those are usually the two evidences we use and we peg them as the pillars of spirituality. Unfortunately, it's not so. There is a place for prosperity. So if I came for koinonia poor, dejected, and in one year, suddenly I became a multi-millionaire, great house, great car, that is wonderful. But chances are excellent if you compare my before and now or the latter part of me, you can conclude that this man has really become spiritual. It's not necessarily so. The dynamics of spirituality is not like that. Even though spirituality has streams and one of the expressions is a prosperous life. Are we together? Yes. Spirituality has streams. Prosperity is not spirituality, but spirituality can have an expression that causes you to prosper. The miraculous itself is not spirituality. Are we together now? The fish that brought coin was not necessarily spiritual. It just obeyed an instruction and brought coins. So there are many believers, for instance, who have not made up their minds to be spiritual. And we pursue either the miraculous for those who are interested in ministry and then for those who want you know, money and a good life. And nothing is wrong with that necessarily. But we pursue those things and we conclude that provided I have money and provided promotion has come and is coming, I must be spiritual. I'm telling you that it may not be accurate. There are some of the most prosperous people around who are not spiritual at all. When you weigh them in the spirit, they are as light as a feather, even though they have money. So when we talk about weight in the spirit, we have to use superior parameters. This is life eternal, John 17, 3, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Are we together? When the Bible talks of bearing fruit, he's not just talking of results alone. 
there are fruits unto righteousness, a transformed life, intimacy with God. Are we together? Before other parameters. It's important that we learn this. Now, I did this checklist for you so that you will look carefully. What aspect of my life have I ignored? For some of you, you have learned nothing about prayer. Perhaps some of you are just coming. You are just getting connected to this vision. You're most welcome. But it's important for you to listen and learn. Some of you do not know how to derive profit from scripture. You've not learned that. You were not mentored to understand that. Some of you do not know anything about the Holy Spirit aside from the fact that you think he's a ghost. There's a lot more to learn. Huh. Are we together? 